In this video, we will figure out how to simulate physics experiments using the Python language, together with the Pygame library and the PyMonk physics engine. And the premise for the creation of today's story was the video I saw about the Galton board, this is a board in which a large number of balls through a narrow hole falls on pegs, this chaotic fall of the balls forms a rather unexpected result, that is, with a sufficiently large number of balls, the shape of their final arrangement approaches normal distribution curve. And the reason for this is the number of paths leading from the initial peg to the last, if you draw Pascal's triangle, you can see how many ways you can get to each of the peg. So, the closer the peg is to the center, the more paths go to it, and thus the probability of passing through such pegs is maximum. So today we will model a Galton board and the PyMonk physics engine will help us with this. PyMonk is built on top of the well-known Chipmonk physics engine, which has been used to power hundreds of games. Well, before modeling the Galton board, I propose to take a closer look at the PyMonk engine and analyze the basics of working with it. So if you carefully look at the documentation for this engine, you can see that it has a convenient integration with the three popular libraries Matplotlib Pilot and Pygame. Therefore, we carefully delve into the nuances of integration and move on to our project, so here is the code for a standard template for Pygame, which creates a working window of the set resolution. Next, you need to import the PyMonk module and first of all, you need to make a single coordinate system, since in PyMonk the origin of coordinates is in the lower left corner and in Pygame in the upper left. Further, according to the documentation, we will create options for rendering physical PyMonk objects, we need to pass our rendering surface from Pygame to this. The key point of PyMonk is the space in which all the physics processing will take place, and in it you need to set the value of gravity along the y-axis. In the main Pygame loop, you need to set the time step for all calculations in the PyMonk space, and we will do this synchronously with our value for the number of frames, and the last line will just display all this space. So we can say that we have successfully completed the integration of two libraries, so to speak, we made a joint template. And before we go any further, let's go over the fundamental things for PyMonk. There are three types of physical objects, dynamic, kinematic, and static. The dynamic type allows you to fully interact with other bodies and has a large set of physical characteristics. The kinematic type, in turn, has an infinite mass and does not respond to collisions, but such objects can be moved, this is like moving platforms in games. But the static type cannot move, but because of this it gives a performance boost and is used as static objects. So today we will be interested only in dynamic and static types of objects. Let's create our first dynamic object in the form of a ball, determine its mass and radius, automatically calculate its moments of inertia, according to the documentation, it is recommended to do this for all dynamic bodies. And then, based on the mass and moment of inertia, it is necessary to create the body of the object and determine its location, then on the basis of the body, together with the radius, we create the shape of the objects in the form of a circle, and at the end we add the body and shape to our created space. Now you can see how the created object falls down under the influence of gravity. Let's make a floor at the bottom of the screen for this we will create a static object an instance of the segment class, in other words, a segment is an object to which you need to set the start and end coordinates and thickness. For a static object, it is enough to create only a shape and add it to the space, Let's run the program and see that the ball has stopped falling, but it doesn't look very natural. Therefore, for forms there is such an interesting attribute as the coefficient of elasticity, let's set it to our objects and again compare the result. And now this is a completely different matter now we can see the full work of physics in action. For a more interesting picture, let's make a function the result of which will be the appearance of the ball in the place we specified. And for example, let the ball appear where you decide to click the left mouse button. Let's see and it seems to me now that the advantage of using a physics engine is very obvious, but pay attention to the horizontal line on the balls, it tells us about the angle of rotation of the balls, it does not change because we have no friction force between objects. So, just like with elasticity, objects have a friction attribute, it is designed to set the coefficient of friction for objects, and in such a simple way the friction force between objects appeared in our simulation, now the balls make a certain turn upon impact and it looks quite realistic. Well, here the idea came to create an even more interesting simulation. To do this, import a random number generator and create one more dynamic object, just make it a box shape, set the mass and size of the object, similarly calculate the moment of inertia, but only using the function for rectangular objects. Based on the mass and moment, we will create an instance of the body and determine its position, we also need to create its shape using the class for constructing polygons, 
but here we also determine the approximate coefficients of elasticity and friction along with a random color, and add it to the space for its processing. So let's take a look and in the end we have one more object with which you can realistically interact with the balls. Now I propose to slightly change the shape of the object, make it in the form of a brick, and from such bricks, using two cycles, we will build a wall in half the screen. Let's see what happened, the wall of bricks turned out to be not very stable, but it is curious to destroy it with our balls. And whatever you say, the physics looks very plausible, while creating such a simulation turned out to be not at all difficult. By the way, the wall is hard to collapse, so let's add mass to our ball, let's make it 1000 times heavier and larger, and again we can't wait to look at all this. And now a huge mass fell from the sky and the bricks immediately scattered like grains of sand, but to be honest, I am quite satisfied with this result. Well, this knowledge about the work of Pymunk is quite enough to model the Galton board. And for the convenience of designing this board, I sketched a simple sketch in which I determined the position of the main elements and objects, so it will be easier to draw them, otherwise you can get confused in the coordinates of these points. Then it is necessary to perform not at all complicated but at the same time routine actions, that is, we set the value to the points from the drawing, it will also be convenient to make a separate function for creating segments at the given points, the input parameters of the function will be the coordinates of the points and also the size of the segment, then select the radius and mass for balls and determine the thickness of the segments. Now, using the given points, we will form a list with the coordinates of the segments we need, and going through this list, we will call the function for constructing segments. So you can see the intermediate result and almost half of the work has already been done, now you need to place the pegs and form columns, for the pegs we will write a separate function that will create a static round object of the color we specified, and also have elasticity and friction coefficients. And it remains to place the pegs in a certain way so that they are in a checkerboard pattern. Here we will start on the parity of the operation of the first cycle and, depending on this, we will shift the row by half the distance between the pegs, and then we will act very tricky, when forming the last row of pegs at the last iteration, we will draw columns exactly under them. So the solemn moment has come and our Galton board is ready. And let's start testing, everything looks quite realistic, but for some reason I don't want to let in only one ball, so let's completely fill our bowl with balls. The position for the ball will be random in the bowl area and the function to create the ball will return its body in order to take advantage of Pygame's drawing of balls, then we will create 800 balls of random color and display on the screen, this will also be an example of how to use Pygame's drawing functions. And finally, we can run our simulation, it is quite interesting to look at the results of this experiment, and as we can see from the first seconds, it becomes clear the final picture of the distribution of balls on our board is similar to what we could see on the real Galton board. Such a distribution closely resembles a normal distribution curve, so with such tools we can build simulations of various physical models right at home. Write which simulations you are interested in, subscribe to the channel and see you soon.